in this video, we're not going to laze around in this chair all day. We're going to take a look at two current model G-Shock analog watches. Now, obviously you can go for the more expensive MTG and MRG lineup of analog watches. But if you want something, you know, that's a little bit cheaper and, you know, maybe a little bit more useful in features, then one of these two here might very well fit the bill. The bands on these two watches obviously differ. The band on the Mudmaster is a resin and it's basically a very simple clasp with a good solid locking gripper there. Also very comfortable. The band material on the GWF A1000 C1A, what <laughs> a load of letters, it sounds like R2D2 from Star Wars, no? Um, is a stainless steel resin composite band with a double lock, one press, three, three fold clasp. I find them both to be very, very comfortable. It has here a screw type of lengthening and shortening device which allows the bracelet to be made longer or shorter depending on your needs at that particular moment of wearing or of course a big adjustment for a wetsuit. How you adjust this bracelet, there are spring bars inside. The bezel on both of them is stainless steel and of course the screw down crowns will be steel the buttons on the mudmaster look like they're steel and the buttons on the frogman look like steel on this side here some sort of resin on this side the gwf a1000 frogman uses uses a carbon monocoque case this case is made using resin that incorporates carbon fibers, and of course, a stainless steel bezel. According to the G-Shock website, for both of these watches, they have a removable back. Just undo those two screws, take off the strap or bracelet. The back will then come off, change the battery, and then fit it back together again. The GWG2000 has a stainless steel back, stainless steel bezel and a carbon core structure. This is made using resin which incorporates carbon fibers. One thing that both of these watches lack is a battery level indicator. And I believe the only way that you can tell is when the battery gets low, the second hand does a double skip. But in complete darkness, both of these watches will last five to six months until you need to, you know, put them in the sunshine. If we take each one individually just for a moment. So we'll take a look at the GWG 2000 first. Now, obviously, this one is your outdoor adventure watch. So this is what you would take to the mountains, hiking, backpacking, or any extreme outdoor muddy sport. Here, of course, you have your compass, you have your altimeter, and then you have your barometer and your thermometer. Your GWF A1000 is a G-Shock analog watch for the diver. This isn't your rugged mountain watch for mountain hiking, camping adventures. This is more your boating, diving, analog G-Shock. Obviously with all of the same G-Shock ruggedness, you can not obviously move the hands out of the way of your own volition, as the instructions tell you that you can. You can't. And so we can see by pressing the top left hand button that moves the hour and the minute hand out of the way. Although it will do it itself 
when necessary. So if you're looking at the barometer and you want a quick look when you first go in, it'll move the hands out the way. Again, when you want to look at the temperature. So the main features here that set this one apart from the Mudmaster are thus. When you press the bottom left, that takes you to your tide time. Top left moves the hands out the way very conveniently. And you can see that my low court tide time has just passed low tide and heading towards a high tide. I have quite a few videos on this watch if you're interested. If you do a long press, bottom left, hold it in. The hands automatically shift to the 12 o'clock. And this little arrow down here is now pointing towards the D for dive. So what you can now do with this watch, use this as a glorified diving timer. Unfortunately, there is no depth gauge. But how this works briefly is bottom right, one quick press, and that's your dive counter ticking away. And when you're on the surface, a long bottom right press, keep holding it. And that's your surface time counter. And then bottom right quick is your dive counter. When you finished, long bottom left, hold it in. And that just resets the watch back to the time. So if you don't need those outdoor rugged things, but you would like a G-Shock analog watch, then maybe the Frogman is the one to go for. Right, let's have a look at some of the features where they are pretty much the same. So they're both solar powered. They both have multiband six. And what that means is once they're set up correctly in the UK, US, Japan, China, and most of Europe, once they're set, they automatically check the time once a day from a radio controlled signal. They both have sapphire crystal glass and they both have screw down crowns. They're both 200 meter water resistant. They both have a dual time. The dual time on the the dual time on the Frogman is in this little window on the bottom left hand side. If you want the dual time on your Mudmaster, then you need to come down to world time and then you have your world time set down there. On both of them, you can rotate the world time and the home time between the sub command dials or the LCD and the main watch. As you can see on the Mudmaster here, I must have it set up that it's switched it automatically. Can't remember how I did that, but it's obviously done that. We can set the time back. The light switch on the, the light switch on the Frogman is this button over here on the top right. And if you want to use the light switch on the Mudmaster, it's this switch down here, right in the middle at the bottom. So a a bottom right press on the Frogman. A short press confirms that it got a radio signal this morning to correct the time. And if you do a long bottom press, hold it in, you can now connect it to your app. Move the hands out of the way so you can see the date and the day. It does not give you the month on here. Then when you're in time mode, you can have dual time or you can have the day, month, and date displayed. And then you're back to your month and date with the little barometer graph hiding behind the minute hand here, which of course we can't shift very easily until you go into barometer and then it shifts it. Stopwatch timer and you get five alarms on here. With your froggy, you get your stopwatch timer and one alarm and i find them both very very 
comfortable. So, you know, it really does depend on what you're doing. You know, if you just want one, like I said, if you're an, an outdoorsy person, then in many ways, the Mudmaster just makes a lot more sense. When you undo the crown, pull it out one stop, that allows you to change the subcommand dial time. Zone. Pull out a second stop, and that allows you to change the main command dial. Have a screw down crown, which we can pull out. And whereas the and whereas the froggy pulled out two stops, one for the dual time, one for the main time, this one pulls out just once. And you can adjust that, the city, by turning the dial that. You can also here adjust the hours and minutes, be how you would change the time manually. Now, of course, we've messed up the time now. So when you want to manually do the radio controls, you can go into that. This feature works very well on the Mudmaster. You just have to be patient and wait, maybe up to 20 odd minutes. You can press bottom right. Pressing and holding bottom right on the Frogman for half a second or more also gives you the remote control setting. Although, bizarrely, for some reason, I wasn't able to get it to work. Auto RC on, auto RC off. You can calibrate the barometer here. Although I would leave the barometer very well alone. You could calibrate the, comp the temperature here. When you pull it out for the stopwatch, it's just telling you to push it back in again. For the timer, you can use the subcommand dial to change your timer for your alarm. You can set your alarm with crown. Well time can be set with the crown out. You can do a lot of different controls with the crown out on this one. In the Frogman, go to timer or alarm, pull the crown out, and you could adjust that as well with the crown. If I've missed anything out, please do leave a comment below. Obviously, I have individual videos on both of these watches. Again, if there's anything on any of my watches specifically that you would enjoy listening and watching, please do post a comment below. Ideas are always useful and welcome. I can primarily just do videos on what I have. Although, if anyone has a watch that I could borrow, I don't know how we'd set that up, but anyway... If anyone has a watch I could borrow, obviously that would be a bonus and, you know, future content and content for future videos. Please do like, subscribe, share, hit that notification button to all. I have added a super thanks uh, next to the like button. So if you want to, uh, you know, do a super thanks, then any contributions, of course, will go towards uh, future equipment or future watches. And of course, will be thanks to you. I also have buy me a coffee if you want to try that uh, as a thank you for all of my dedicated hard work, sweat streaming off my forehead as I do these tireless videos for you. But simply just a like is more than sufficient and if you have watched this video to the very very end then you have helped already simply by doing that because that helps the analytics and i thank you the most thank you very much